There are many unique routes student athletes take to end up at JU, a school that certainly embodies a melting pot culture. I always knew I loved football, uh, and uh, Coach Bell, Cade, had came to bowls, uh, I guess Cade's freshman year, my senior year. So I met him at a couple practices, and I told him, I told him then, I was like, hey, I'm going to come play for you, now I'm going to do a GA afterwards and get into coaching. So I'm sure then he probably thought I was crazy, uh, like who is this little tiny kid coming up to me. Uh, but it's just, JU, I wanted to stay close to home. I'm pretty close with my family. Um, so I stayed at home and just ended up going here. I really didn't have any other places I wanted to be. It was a pretty easy sell. Um, obviously it was a good sell because five more Canadians followed me afterwards, but uh, it was, it just kind of fit with what I wanted. Small school, good soccer program at the time. We were top 100, which was, which was pretty good because it was a new program. Um, it was, unfortunately it wasn't my first look, but everything happens for a reason and I think it worked out for the best, me ending up here. I was actually Coach, coach Bell. Um, I, I played high school, high school football at Trinity, Trinity Catholic of Cattle, Florida. He was actually my, my head coach there. And um, just those, those four years of uh, playing there, um, him, having him as my coach, we just kind of built, built that bond, that relationship to where, you know, I, I just really felt comfortable being, being with him. This is home. This is Jacksonville University. This is, uh, this is um, where I grew up. Uh, this is where guys come to, to, to grow as individuals, uh, to overachieve. Seems like that's what Jacksonville University is about. A bunch of guys getting together, a bunch of people getting together, uh, doing more than what they're really um, asked of, uh, growing together, um, and creating some really special bonds. Some student athletes can't quit JU after they graduate and stay as graduate assistants or coaches. Those that stay do vary some in their motivations. Britteration is an assistant coach for women's lacrosse and is one of five JU staffers whose careers ended just last year. Um, it was definitely just the environment. The people that I'm surrounded by uh, really dragged me to come back to the school. Uh, I came in and I didn't actually play, I was ineligible, so I wound up staying a fifth year anyways, which is pretty cool um, You know that I stuck around for those five years, but for some reason it's just the people that draw you back to this campus and the environment around you is what really brought me back to the school. For others, like baseball associate head coach Chris Hayes, Jacksonville is home in all senses of the word. It's my third tour of duty, so to speak. You know, four years as an undergrad, five years as an assistant, and now going into my third year as an assistant head coach for, for Coach Montez. The attraction in coming back to JU was one, I, needed an, I wanted an opportunity to get into college athletics. Uh, I had coached, a, it's been, I had a good career, played five years, uh, got in the business world for a couple years, Decided I wanted to get into coaching. Spent a year at high school, uh, coaching at the high school level, and Coach Alexander uh, was gracious enough to give me an opportunity to come in and, and get my opportunity here at JU to establish my college career. Um, you know, best decision of my life uh, to come back home. Best decision of my life in, in 1990 to make the decision to come to Jacksonville University back 25 years ago. For the football GAs, it was the relationships with head coach Kerwin Bell, who doesn't like to see his former players leave either. Well, one thing, KB likes to take care of his guys. And so um, one, one, of the, one of the former JU, JU players who had his position, and he actually took a, a high school coaching job um, down at um, um, IMG. And so the position came up, and I spoke with, spoke with Coach Bell, and he told me if, if, if I want to do it, you know, the position is there for me. And um, once again, I just think I just fall back on the relationship that that we built over over the years, and um, I, I I can just thank him for it. After I got done playing, I uh, I coached high school, so I kept I was back here like all the time. You know, I want a GA, I want a GA. You got a spot open, you got a spot open. Uh, but I've never I've never brought it up to him like, hey, remember when we first met and I said, hey, I want a GA? I don't th I've never brought that up to him, so I don't know if he remembers it or not. For most. It's an opportunity to wet their feet in coaching while also continuing their education, like women's lacrosse GA Asia Moore, a 2015 JU grad. I think education is the most important thing a person can do for themselves is to further education in any capacity that they can. So when Coach Mindy offered me the GA position, um, I mean, the huge benefit of that is the, the you know, next up master's degree. So 
I'm really excited to do that and also a huge part of it is being back with the team and being able to interact with them in a different capacity than, um, than a player. Others don't want to stop there. I will go back to school again after my master's. Uh, I'd like to get a doctor in sports psych. Um, a for coaching, I think it's huge if you're able to understand the mental attributes of players and B, I just have a huge fascination in the mental game of any sport. The chance to coach is a way to stay connected to the game they love. I want to coach. I want to coach. You know, I, I, I took some years off um, after finishing up with school and being done with football. And um, you know, you don't you don't really know how, how like how much you love something until it's gone. I think I could see myself definitely doing this for a while. So far, I mean, I've done it for this entire summer, and I've absolutely loved it. Every minute of it, you know, I get to interact with people, with kids. Um, it's just really cool and I definitely could see myself continuing in this path and I'm very excited for it. I want to stick into coaching, um, so if I can't really stick into the college ranks, you know, go back to the high school. So, you know, the education would be, would benefit me going that route. I think it would be awesome to become a head coach. Uh, I know when I was playing and even now as a grad assistant, I watch teams with female head coaches and I just think that is awesome that you're able to put a female in a position with so much power. And like watching when we played UCF this weekend, a fantastic team, top 20 team with a female coach. And it just shows that female coaches are right there with male coaches. And I just think it would be great for the female athletes to have a female coach who has been in their shoes. For Coach Hayes, the coaching road has come and gone from JU, but he couldn't be happier to be back now. I had a great opportunity to, to come back um, and work with Coach Montez. Uh, to, to get back into the Division I level. I uh, was able to have some, some success at the junior college level, but I was really hungry to get back to the Division I world. Um, when Coach Montez took over and offered me the opportunity to come back, uh, it was uh, something I couldn't pass up. This is home. Uh, this is, um, I want to you know, I wanna, I wanna stay here in, in a Dolphin uniform as long as I possibly can. Um, for me to get a chance to get back, it was an honor. Um, and it was a privilege to come back and to work for Coach Montez. For the younger staff members who are just getting started, they feel they offer a unique perspective that the older coaches don't have. You know, having Coach Asia and I together on the coaching staff is really going to help to lift the girls, um, you know, just to another level because we've been there. So we know what that feeling is of wanting to go to the next level. Um, we know, like, the extra work you have to put in to get to that level. So I think that um, we'll definitely be able to help elevate those girls and, you know, go far farther than we ever have. You know, having some younger coaches on the staff, being able to, to relate to them, and you know, you're kind of in the same kind of culture type, you know, maybe same music, kind of stuff like that. Um, I definitely think it helps. I think it helps, you know, being able to, to relate to them. I felt as a player that on this field won a conference and led a team to a conference championship and an NCAA tournament appearance. I just thought, you know what, if there's anyone that's going to be able to do it, it's someone that's been in their shoes. And uh, a lot of girls will listen to me just because they know I'm speaking from experience. I was there 10 months ago in the exact same shoes they were in. So it's been kind of one of those things where like, I want to give back to the young players what I was able to get in my four years. From me being uh, closer in age to, to the players, I'm able to relate more with them and um, just kind of give, give them some wisdom on, on what they're going to go through and you know, just how to get through some tough times, you know, on the football field, in a classroom, and um, I, I, I really enjoy it. Relationships are huge in sports, and the friends you make playing and coaching can stick with you for life. With it being as, as small a university as it is, you develop some really unique and tight bonds with the people that you, you spend the majority of your time with in four years of your life. You, you have a great deal of growth as an individual from 18 to 21, 22 years old, and during that time, the bonds that you do create are very special uh, and there's a lot of attraction for people to come back and, uh, and uh, you know, remember what it was like when it was here. And, and a lot of these guys uh, maintain and, and keep their relationships throughout the rest of their lives. I mean, some of my best friends today are still guys that I went to college with here at JU and that was, shoot, that was 25 years ago. Sometimes best friends get to leave the field 
and head to the sidelines together. It's a lot of fun. We're, since we're both new, um, we can kind of work through things together. We always got each other's backs, so whenever one doesn't understand something, she'll come to me or I'll, vice versa, I'll come to her, and we usually get things solved pretty quickly. It's also a lot of fun. Uh, we're, I like to think Brit, Brit's my best friend, so it's, uh, it's really easy to work through things with her and um, communicate with her. Whether having just started in coaching or on their third tour of duty, those that return to JU are united in what draws people to the school to begin with. Oh, it's definitely a home away from home. Um, you know, being on such a small campus, not even that it's that small, but you meet everyone and the relationships that you establish from professors to, you know, President Koss to the athletic director is just incredible and you really feel welcomed and that's something I really enjoyed about the campus. For the football side, it's just that, you know, it's like a, it's a family atmosphere, you know, everyone's in it kind of together. Um, and, and that can go for the, whole, for the whole campus, I guess I should say, you know, it's a, it's a small campus, so everybody, seems like everyone knows everyone, you know, and everyone's just kind of like a big family, family atmosphere. The relationships that you build here um, with your professors, with stu other student athletes, with athletes in general, with the staff, um, any faculty around campus, everyone's so willing to help you achieve your goals um, that they'll do whatever they can um, to kind of be a stepping stone in that process. With the facilities and the growth, um, the, the leadership and the direction of President Cost and Dr. Horner. Um, this, this university and this athletic department is as good a position for success as it ever, as it ever has been. Um, so uh, maybe I can keep these guys grounded a little bit, help them understand our history, help them understand where we come from, where the universities come from, where the, pro, where the athletic programs come from, where the baseball programs come from, um, and, and understand how special it is. I got the opportunity to see three matches this summer. I saw England versus France, Colombia versus Mexico, and Costa Rica versus Brazil, and they're all in Moncton, Canada. So it was about a two hour drive from my house, and it was the greatest experience. I got to watch England and France and Colombia and Mexico, and they were both at the Moncton Stadium. It was absolutely unreal. Right before going into the England and France game, we met two girls from England who traveled all the way to Moncton just to watch their home country play, so I thought that was incredible. I met a few people, because we did have to wait in a long line before entering the stadium. So there were people from the United States, and just everywhere came together to watch the games, and they, they loved the atmosphere, and they loved Canada, because everyone's so friendly, and the weather did was okay. It did rain a little bit, but it was good for the time of the tournament. Every single person in the country was so excited to have the World Cup in Canada. Um, many of my friends and family traveled all the way to the West Coast to watch camp, just our own home team play. Um, I'd just say it's an event that really brought everyone together. Just that Colombia-Mexico game was amazing. There's a lot of Colombians and Mexicans actually at the game, so just hearing their chants and the excitement in their voices, even though I didn't understand what exactly they were saying, it was just you could hear the excitement in their voices. Even when their team did something wrong, they were still there supporting their team. Colombia scored against Mexico in the last 10 minutes. Uh, the Colombians around us went absolutely bonkers, and it was it's so exciting. They really are fearless in the attack. Uh, I'm an attacking player myself, and I noticed that uh, they would just go with speed and attack constantly, and it was just good to see that they were just fearless in what they did. They weren't hesitant at all. We got to see all the different chants and cheers that all the different countries have, and although I didn't really understand everything they said, it was a cool atmosphere to be around. Just like I was disappointed in that, the England-Mexico game, I was a little disappointed in Canada's performance at the World Cup. Um, Canadians were backing them, very supportive, but they didn't really uh, perform during the tournament, I guess you would say, so I kind of had a little bit more favor towards the Americans. They did prove that they were the best in the country and they did get While student athletes spend their summers developing their skills for the upcoming seasons, they also work on bettering themselves for their lives after their playing careers are over. I was at a company called um, FIS, which is Fidelity Information Services, and I was in the cash application, specifically in accounts receivable. And basically I was, I was considered an accounting intern Anything that the manager needed to um, basically assist um, and give the executives, I prepared. And he just looked over it and then he presented it. So mainly I worked in sorting data and a lot of different things in Excel. 
I just really helped with going through news reports and different things with Wounded Warrior Project in order to make sure that when people were saying they wanted to fundraise for Wounded Warrior Project that they weren't fraudulent. So it was really helping to fuel Wounded Warrior Project by actually finding the funds that people said they were fundraising. We worked for the uh, Jacksonville Armada and we were a part of the marketing and promotional crew. So we handled most of like the game day events, we handled the pre-match party, um, game like events that ran throughout the course of the game. So we would be like directly involved if like any task needed to be handled, like you had to deliver um, something from point A to point B or the entire setup of halftime to the sponsorships and pr different promotional events that happened. Um, we were in charge of all of that and making sure everything ran smoothly. For some, there was a direct correlation between their internship and majors at JU. I received an email from my professors, Dr. Hall, and for my major, I'm sports management, you have to have internship credits in order to graduate. So I'm staying in Jacksonville this summer and just thought it'd be a good opportunity to get some of my credits out of the way. Well, the opportunity really arose after I hurt myself. Um, Adam Silva, men's assistant coach here at JU, um, he sent me a care package um, in order to motivate me to get through therapy and rehab and use Wounded Warrior Project as that motivation to push through. And I had been interviewing for internships at the time, so I reached out to him and asked if there were any opportunities. And he had an opportunity for me on the community events team. Others were motivated by things such as love of sports. I think it definitely had a big part to do with it. I knew, I, like, I've always enjoyed sports. I'm not necessarily uh, studying sports management, but um, the chance to be part of the, the soccer team, I've heard so much about it. I had heard from it, how it kind of started from the ground up, and I thought it would be a really cool opportunity, especially living down here during the summer. A common theme, JU had each of them more than prepared for what they experienced this summer. Not even in the accounting department specifically, just JU in general, because I'm also in this thing called BCOE, Brumo Circle of Excellence, and um, what, we, what we do in Brumo Circle of Excellence, we do these things called um, CEO Speaker Series, where we have CEOs from big companies come in and we have lunch with them and we ask them questions and things like that. So similar, similarly, we had um, these things called lunch and learns with executives in the company. So straight off the bat, like me, I felt like I had the advantage because I had already been through numerous, um, numerous um, meetings like this one. So. I came in prepared with questions already and I was the only person, the first one. So everyone looked at me and was like, oh my goodness, she's asking questions, she already, she's prepared. Like, how does she know to do this? All from JU, Bromo Circle of Excellence. I would say that my DSIM classes, when you're working primarily in Excel, really, really helped me to be prepared for that internship because I was working in Excel most of the summer. So I really found myself coming in and a lot of my coworkers were just extremely surprised by how well I could work it and how quickly I could get through the document by doing different things because I had had that previous experience and knowledge with it. So shout out to Dr. Mattia. <laughs> All of my marketing classes definitely have played like a large role into it and definitely like the communication type of classes. Um, they also just like how to talk to people, how to be more engaging with them. I think that also has had like a big help this summer just with them sending us out into like the crowds and like asking them to come to our different events, to our different um, sponsorships we were having. I think that that definitely played a big role were those um, like business communication courses and my marketing courses. They were able to use their athletics backgrounds to their advantage as well. I think that Wounded Warrior Project does a great job with really emphasizing teamwork and trust and honesty and supporting each other. And that's something that's really emphasized on our team. So I think that that experience really prepared me for that also because they're so surrounded around family and team. And um, just being able to rely on one another, be completely open and honest. If you had an issue with something, you could honestly confront somebody and you weren't afraid of it. And my, one of my managers was such a good leader and she was such an inspiration to me because of how well she led that it allowed me to come back for the year and it's just really allowing me to see different ways that I can be a better leader. I definitely went in um, more competitive. Um, I feel like as more competitive than any of the other interns. Um, and I kind of feel like they looked up to me a little bit, you know, because I was an athlete. Um, I, and the time at work, it's so different because, you know, at JU um, or at college in general, and you're an athlete, you already have your schedule planned out, sort of, kind of. But um, at work, 
you know, everything is on you. Your manager's like, you gotta get this done, this done, and this done, and then you have your day. So you're like, okay, well, which one, like, how do I prioritize this? You know, and being a student athlete and already, and already having to um, deal with time issues, I already knew, all right, I'm going to do the hardest one first or just take piece by piece, you know, and get it done that way. So that was just easy for me. Each of them took something different from their experience. I feel like the first game I was actually a part of when we were like down in like the, du the dugout because they played at Community um, First Park, so it was, they com um, convert the baseball field to a soccer field. So we were down there and I think when I saw like the whole entire thing coming together and after we had just like ran like a super successful pre-match party, we ran a really smooth halftime and then we like pretty much finished out the day and I just saw the whole thing plan out like pan out perfectly. I think that was when I realized I was like it's really cool to see something from start to end and like to work through it with one another. One of our 20 programs is called the track program and it's a 12 month program in order to support you to get through college. Um, so people who were veterans wanted to get through college and it's very difficult for most of them and so our program supported you every step of the way getting through school and taking those classes and being successful and I went to one of the introductions for the people joining the track program for the year and everyone introduced themselves, stood up and it was incredible hearing people say that they had never had any hope after they um, had came out of service and they didn't think that they'd have anything to look forward to in life and how just coming and being a part of the track program gave them something to look forward to, gave them hope and allowed them to be a better father and a, a better husband and it was just incredible hearing that they didn't think that there was any chance for them and that Wounded Warrior Project gave them that support and that hope that they had. I feel like the internship provided a lot of opportunity. Um, I learned a lot. One thing is basically the experience in itself because me, I've been working since I was 15 years old but never in a business setting. So the type of professional experience that it provided was optimal for me. You don't really realize how much goes on behind the scenes. I mean, as a player, we're just focus on our game and that's it. But you don't realize how much effort like takes part in behind the scenes work. Were any of them swayed in their career choices after their internships? I'd like to do definitely something with professional sports. I don't know if I'd do the promotional and like sponsorship aspect that we did. I'd kind of like doing like sport event planning mainly. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to doing what I was doing at FIS, but I'm def I will definitely keep my options open. Um, I'm the type of person that feels like everything happens for a reason and I will be right at where I need to be at the time that I need to be it.